Sarah's Fury The first thing you will notice about Sarah were her eyes. They had the blue tint of a bright sky and hid behind a thick mass of black lashes. One could vow that the innocence of her eyes reflected the softness of her heart. It lit with warmth and spoke many deep emotions. She had thin lips that looked like a perfect slit on her spotless oval face. At five foot four, she had slender legs that carried her thin body with grace and elegance. To say she was beautiful is actually an understatement. Sarah attracted stares from acquaintances and strangers alike. To accentuate her beauty, her choices of gowns, she almost always wears one, where all were always fitted and never revealing. Modest is the word for her signature dresses. Coming from a Christian home, she was careful not to ever come across an unbeliever. Sarah and her brother Samuel were raised by their single mom. Their father left home when Sarah was six and Sam was four. Shortly before he finally stopped coming back home from work, Sarah had run into her parents several times in bitter exchanges. She would hear her mom shouting at her dad. His voice was not always up. As the arguments continued, she would hear from their room next door, weeping sounds. It sounds like a crack of his belt over her mother's body. Then there would be pushing and shoving. She never saw him in the act because it always happened behind their locked bedroom door. He usually leaves the house afterwards and will not return until two days later. But their mom will come out of her room with a swell on her face or a cut somewhere on the skin. As young as they were, they needed no one to tell them that dad was abusing mom, even though he never laid his hands on her and her brother. She grew to have a deep dislike for him. So when he finally left and failed to return over a week, Sam was the first to break the silence about his whereabouts by asking his mom, Mama, where is daddy? He's no longer going to be living with us. She turned to look at Sarah. When their eyes met, she quickly stood from her chair to start collecting the plates on the table. They had just finished eating their breakfast of bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. When is he coming home? Sam was not someone who would be silent by a curt answer. I do not know. She was obviously losing her patience. Her temper was short like her height. But I want my daddy. Sam's pestering can get on any nerve. But you can't blame him. He was too young to understand. Not like Sarah understood all of it, yet she didn't ask questions like Sam was doing. She was an introvert. Her conversations were always in her head. You can hardly tell what she was thinking at any given time. Even when she spoke, the words were few. Sam, your father is never coming back to this house. You need to learn to live with that. She tried to be calm, but the words came out with a burst. Sam and Sarah were both startled. By now, there were tears running down their mom's cheek. She grabbed the plate she could carry and stormed into the kitchen. But that was 10 years ago. Sarah is 16 now and in her 11th grade at Town St. Harrison High School in Queens. Her set will go on to produce the highest percentage of students passing regiment exams of any New York City Department of Education High School the next year. Sadly, Sarah will not be part of them. Two weeks before the official prom date was fixed, Max had asked Sarah to be his date. Max was a senior. For over three months, he has constantly been all over her trying to get her attention, even though she outrightly turned him down at first. His persistence endured him to her. He started following her to church. When he found out that she was a member of the Elm Church in Queens, at lunch hours, you will find him somewhere not far from where she sat. At every opportunity, he was at her face, offering to buy her lunch or willing to give her a ride home, and she constantly rejected his kind offers. But she succumbed to his pressures and agreed to come to a date with him. But not really. The prom was supposed to be for the seniors only. But being that Max was the leader of the planning committee, 
He persuaded the committee into allowing the 11th graders who were willing to come to be part of the event. He had his intentions. Prom was slated for Friday evening. From Monday of that week, all the seniors had nothing to talk about except that. The juniors were also excited that they were allowed to come. Along every corridor and in the hallways, groups and in pairs discussed who was coming with whom and what kind of gown or tuxedo they were going to wear. It took a lot of convincing and promising before Sarah's mom finally agreed to allow her attend the prom night. It's not your prom. Why are they even asking you guys to be part of it? It's nothing wrong. They just want us to be in the phone with them. I want you coming home straight afterwards. No going to anybody's house for no party. Alright mom, I promise. On Thursday afternoon, Sarah was waiting for her brother to round up practice at the gymnasium when Catherine and her clique walked up to her. She was so engrossed with the novel she was reading that she didn't notice them walk up to the Blanchards to meet her. So, it was you who came to get the approval of the school authority to allow 12th graders run a prom night, right? Boyfriend Stiller. Catherine was rumored to be having a crush on Max and was hoping that she would be his date for the prom. When Sarah lifted her face off the book, she was met with cold stares from five angry faces. The world boyfriend still angered her. Excuse me, what did you say? She called you a boyfriend stealer. What are you going to do about it, egghead? It was Chloe that responded. As she said that, she pushed the back of Sarah's head with her index fingers. Except Sarah's mom and her brother. Nobody knew that hidden behind Sarah's beauty was a terrible temper. She could be ached by the slightest provocation. And when it happened, we could see her visibly shaken with fury boiling inside her. Even though she tried to keep it under control, it sometimes flared up. But that's usually at home. And now someone has pushed her to the wall. A hard blue landed on Chloe's jaw just as the words she was uttering were barely out of her mouth. Sarah had balled her fingers into a fist almost impulsively and drove them through Chloe's jaw. As Chloe tried to steady herself from the impact of the blow, she slipped and fell, with her head landing on one of the railings of the bleachers with a thud. For a split second, there was silence in the whole gymnasium. Everyone turned in the direction of the sound and the lifeless body of Chloe laid on the ground. Chloe suffered a concussion. The doctors confessed that if not for the timely arrival of the ambulance, she would have died. Because she was a juvenile, Sarah was sentenced to seven months in New York City Department of Corrections. She was also expelled from Townsend's High. On the day she was meeting with the detention officer in the office, a frame hanging directly over his head read, Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. These were the words from James chapter 1 verse 19. As Sarah read them, a river of burning tears flowed down from her lovely eyes. <laughs>